Hi, so today we're going to be talking about burnout as a massage therapist, what it means, what you can do to get rid of it, and also what you can do to prevent it. So this is something that over the course of my 23 years, oh gosh, 24 years now, I have probably gone through this really um, horrible thing called burnout, which is just another way of saying that you don't like your job, you're not happy with your job, and I've probably gone through it at least three or four times over the course of that. So I don't think that that's really bad, but in a field where you're a caregiver, a nurturer, whether it be a nurse or a psychologist or a counselor or any kind of therapist, including massage therapy, I think that it's very easy to get so absorbed into your work and your patients, your clients, that sometimes you don't put yourself first and you forget to take care of yourself, both mentally and emotionally, sometimes physically. And so what I wanted to make a video about is specifically about massage therapists and how when we put 100% of ourselves into our work and our clients and we um, kind of put everything out of our head when we're working on a client so that we can specifically focus on them. And when you do that for years and years at a time, especially if you're full-time, sometimes it can get to the point where you're just completely oversaturated. So let's talk about three things. The first one's going to be how to recognize that you're in burnout because awareness is the first step. Step two is going to be what to do to get yourself out of it. And then step three is really just going to be how to prevent it from happening again, which is kind of a combination of one and two. So here are the signs that for me personally, I've reached burnout in my job. When I wake up in the morning and I don't really feel jazzed and excited about my client um, load that day. It's not because I don't like a particular client. It's not because I am angry with them in any way. It, it could be any client. So that it's not about the person. It's about what's going on in my head as far as not being excited and happy to get up and do what my job is. Okay, so the first sign of recognizing that you've entered burnout is when you don't feel excited about your job anymore. It's, it's pretty basic. Um, it can happen very slowly. It can creep up on you. And sometimes you don't know that that's what you're feeling. And um, maybe physically you're feeling run down. Maybe mentally you're feeling pulled in a million different directions and you're just not giving your all anymore during your massage sessions um, of interest and passion for the day ahead of you that you've scheduled. Um, as harsh as that sounds, I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're all here to find out how to get rid of. And um, recognizing it is the most important thing, I think, so that you don't sort of go into this downward spiral, into this rabbit hole of just getting so burnt out on your job that you don't even think that you want to continue massage therapy as a career anymore. That would be awful. You got into this career for a reason because you love it. You love working with people. You love making a difference in somebody's life that day, making them feel happy. And um, when I have entered burnout, I over the years have now learned to recognize it pretty quickly and it's something that you make yourself very guilty for. Um, it's not easy to admit to yourself that that's what you're feeling, but I just want to let you know that if you are feeling this, it's okay. Don't make yourself feel guilty about it. Don't put yourself through the ringer. It's totally natural. Then here's what you can do. Here are some tangible things that you can do to get yourself out of that slump. Uh, they've worked for me, so I do. And I don't always do this every time, but when I do, I, I notice a difference and it really helps. And I make, I think it's called an affirmation list or a gratitude list. And then I also make um, 
what would it be called? A negative list? <laughs> I don't know. I make two lists. One of them is everything that I'm grateful for about my job. The other one is everything that is driving me crazy and making me unhappy. And when I actually write out my thoughts, whether they're negative or positive, and then I can sit back and read them, it makes it a little bit more, it has more of an impact than if I just sit there and sort of I'm coming back. So that's one tangible thing that you can do to just kind of start the process of falling back in love with your job. So another really important thing that you need to do when you've gone into this dark place is take a vacation. Um, even if you don't leave town, staycations are just as relaxing, I think. It's, it's basically not working for four or five days. You know, if, if you can, m maybe even longer, like seven to 10 days, just take a break where you're not giving massages, you're not um, answering emails or text messages. As far as work is concerned, you're off the grid. Pretend like you're on a desert island and your phone doesn't get any connection. You have a staycation, I think it's just as important to disconnect for that time and do things that you love to do. You know, um, for me, it's going on um, maybe a wine tour with my girlfriends or just uh, trying to cook a bunch of dishes with my husband. We love to cook. Um, it, you know, catching up on all of my shows on Netflix that I've fallen behind on, spending time with my kids and uh, maybe putzing around the garden, getting some projects done around the house laying down in the middle of the day and taking a nap. I mean, that's a little slice of heaven that we don't always think can be as powerful as it is. Reading a book, you name it. Just get away from work for a little while. So in the fall, guys, the best way to decompress is Sunday football, at least in my family. So we do it up. We put up two TVs. We uh, cook some sauce. We play with the dogs. We just chill out. It's very relaxing. We're not thinking about work. <laughs> Look at those little Ewoks. Aren't they adorable? There's nothing like a dog jumping up on your lap during football Sunday to calm you down. So we, there's a couple of Moscow mules. We, uh, we like to partake on Sundays. It's fun. And here is some fall scented aromatherapy oils we've got going. And we make some sauce or chili. This is a meat sauce. And it's just so fantastic to get away from everything in the world and stuff. Um, honestly, it's a pretty good sign that I might have too many clients in my um, schedule. And that took a long time for me to come to terms with because in massage school, they teach you work, 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 work as hard as you can. Market yourself. Uh, this is how you get clients in the door. This is what you want to do as far as building up a clientele. Well, that's all well and good. And I completely respect that. And, and, it, and it did work for me. And then when I did then, I got to a point where I hit my first burnout and I had to sit back and think, what am I doing wrong? And one of the things I was doing wrong is I was taking too many clients. I wasn't saying no. So what I had to learn to do, and this may not work for everyone, but it really did work for me, is I had to learn how to say no and what that meant. So when a new client would call, if I didn't have room to get them in my schedule, I referred them out to another therapist who was a colleague of mine. I try to keep like two or three therapists in my network that I can refer clients out to when I just can't, I can't do it anymore. And part of doing that is saying no, especially after in massage school, they teach you, you gotta take everyone who calls you, everyone who knocks on your door, you take that client. Well, no, the reality is you get to a point where you don't have to and you can refer out. And think of it this way, that's, that's a really good landmark to have reached in your career. So instead of feeling guilty about it, um, 
feel wonderful about it. This is a great, uh, a great milestone that you've reached if you're referring clients out because you, you don't want to overwhelm yourself. So another thing that I do when I'm not feeling as excited about my job is I try to either take some classes, whether it's online or um, some seminars. And another thing that I'll do is I'll go and get massages from people who do different kind of massage modalities just to kind of like re-spark that interest in seeing what kind of work other people do and seeing if I can incorporate it into my routine. You know, sometimes just learning one new move. Can... Those are all the things that have worked for me over the years and I hope that some of them can work for you. And um, moving on, to the last part of what I wanted to talk about and that is how to prevent burnout from happening again. And once you start to recognize that you're getting to that point, you're gonna be able to head it off before it hits you. So um, when I start to feel that, like, oh, I'm tired, I feel overwhelmed, which doesn't really happen very often anymore because I finally have my schedule. It's, it's pretty perfect the way that I wanna um, how many days I have off and how many days I work and then on the days that I work how many clients I actually see I've got it down to a science now but it did take a long time to get there and now when I feel like I'm getting tired you know because a lot of it has to do it's not just work it's being a wife it's being a mom being a whole repaired and when you're working and you're raising kids and you're trying to participate in their school activities and you're also heaven forbid trying to have a social life um, it doesn't matter how perfect your schedule is at work, you can still start to feel overwhelmed and it will affect your work. So when I do recognize that coming on, I take a day off. I step back, I um, start to do some reading, I start to really binge watch some YouTube videos on massage, but the most important thing is I, I take a day off. I take a couple of days off, whatever it takes, because I can feel I step out of it, I get excited again, I miss my clients, I, I miss putting my hands and, on their body and trying like a new move that I learned or read about or watched. And so that for me is a way to kind of nip it in the bud before it even consumes me. So hopefully some of this information has helped you. And I know I'm repeating myself at this point, but whether you're a new therapist or a seasoned veteran, please don't feel guilty if you are feeling this way about your job because it's only natural and we're only human. And just instead of going into denial about it, try to do some things to snap yourself out of it. And believe me, it will help you be a better massage therapist and your clients will appreciate you for it. Even if you have to reschedule them because you had to cancel them to take that day off. A happy therapist is a better. Um, I know your time is precious and I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your time with me and watching this video. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, please do.